uh, five tonight, Revelation chapter number five, and we're going to uh, we're going to continue on in our study of this book, and uh, certainly up to now, if you've, uh, if you've been hearing our messages, then it's, uh, I, I think so far, um, what I have been studying and what I've been through to uh, convey to you, I think the message is pretty simple so far. Uh, we understand the seven churches, we understand uh, the time periods of the seven churches, and uh, these things that we have seen, and this, now the scene is in, in heaven where we will be, this part of the the word of God, uh, you know, it's a place where you and I are going to be. Christ is on the throne, and he's there with the uh, 24 uh, elders and the four beasts, and uh, all of these, as we have portrayed them, I think it's pretty easy to understand. Now, that emerald rainbow is something, the bow about the, the throne, the emerald rainbow, uh, is something that's also been a, of interest to us. But we start another, another section here. And at the end of chapter number 4, verse number 11, uh, the Bible tells us this, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. So we see the, that God is, is uh, you know, He deserves the glory. He is worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the praise of man and of angels and of created beings. God's worthy of their uh, of their uh, praise and their worship and their adoration. And he said all these things were created for his pleasure. God had a reason when he created man in his own image. And uh, that, that reason was that, you know, he created us to, to worship him. He created man to worship him. Now, not all do. And uh, not all are going to. But it's a privilege to know that God created us and that we're to worship him. And we do have a true God to worship. Uh, we're, you know, we're the only religion in the world that has a true God is the Christianity and those that believe that Jesus died for them on the cross of Calvary and believe that we can uh, go before God and believe the word of God where it says we can boldly come before the throne of grace and talk to him and where we can uh, lift our hands and worship him. And so we see at the end of that chapter, we see, uh, the, you know, the part about worshiping him and about the uh, the power and the glory that he has. And this chapter 5 is really a continuation of chapter number 4. Now your Bible's divided it up, and, and uh, chap but, but by the conjunction and, we see that it is just a continuation of chapter number 4. And let's read this tonight. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Now, we see a different, a different picture here. Uh, Paul or, or John is portraying that he saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. So there's a different picture here. And he sees one sitting there that has in his right hand the, the hand of power, the hand of authority is the right hand. And he sees that one sitting there with, with his, in his hand a, a scroll or a book. Uh, that is, has seven seals about it. Now, these things are not hard to understand. They're not uh, complicated. It's a scroll that's written on front and back, it says. And it's sealed with seven seals. Now, uh, that is important because this chapter in these seven seal book has, has a key to the remainder of the book of Revelation. So, as we go through these and we, as we open these seals one at a time, we'll not do all that tonight, but we need to pay particular attention to what is in them. And so uh, not just anyone can open these seals. And God's got it in his right hand, the Father. He sees something that he hasn't seen before. John sees God the Father with the, with the uh, book in his right hand. So let's read on. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Now remember, John is called away into, into heaven. And there he is seeing this other, uh, you know, this other personage here on the throne. And as he looks at that, he hears the cry of a strong angel. Uh, there were, you know, many kinds of angels in Scripture. Many millions of angels are, are uh, you know, are about us even tonight. Because angels are, are those that are about God's people. And, you know, they, they sort of watch after us and take care of us. 
He said, I don't believe that, preacher. Well, you go ahead. Amen. I'm glad for, uh, for God's protective hand about me. And if he wants to use angels to do that, that's fine and uh, fine and well. And uh, there's a big study on angels, but we'll not get into it. But here a strong angel uh, spoke with a loud voice. All of a sudden, all of heaven comes to a standstill. Everything's quiet. There's not anyone saying anything as that angel speaks. Is there anyone... Is there anyone who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? No man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Nobody was able to open that book. Now, friend, this is, this is important because that book uh, has to be opened. Those seals have to be, have to be open. And, it, and because John's there and he's, he's watching all of this and in his, in his spirit he's seeing all of this and it troubles him. And John says, verse 4, And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And so nobody could, nobody could do anything. And, it, and it's, it was so sorrowful to John that John wept. So uh, uh, as, as we take this into account, something's got to be done. And John knows that. And here's what he says in verse number 5. And one of the elders saith unto him, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Someone's there to open that book. The line, the line of Judah. None other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And from this time on, he is, you know, he'll be uh, as often referred to the Lamb of God. And so that same Lamb, that same Lamb that John the Baptist saw and wrote about in John 1, 29, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. This is the same person that is, that is told to John by one of the elders. He's able to open these seals. He is worthy. Nobody else is worthy. But the Lamb of God is worthy to open the seals and to open that book that's in the right hand of the Father. So, verse 6, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and on the four beasts, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, uh, sent forth into all the earth. So he sees uh, the, the heavenly Father there, and then he sees the Lamb of God uh, that, is, that is with him. And as he's holding that book, and all of heaven comes to attention at his, uh, you know, at his, at his uh, calling to come and open those seals, and here's what he saw. He saw the midst of the throne, the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood, there he is, a lamb, the one worthy, the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. There he is, standing there ready to open those seals. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the, tr upon the throne. So as, as Jesus, the Lamb of God, redeemed mankind, he is also going to one day redeem the earth. And it, this earth will be redeemed and be, be purchased uh, back and be made all anew again. But he, he takes the book from the Father. The Son takes the book from the, out of the Father's right hand. And he opens that book. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Now that's important. Uh, your prayers are being bottled up. Now here's John looking at, at Jesus, looking at the Father, which he hasn't yet seen in his spirit. He's seeing the, uh, the Father, Jehovah God, the great I Am, and Christ. And the elders uh, fall down and they have vows of prayers. They have vows of prayers uh, upon them. And, and that's the, the prayers of the saints that are a sweet-smelling savor to the Lord. Those, those, those sweet odors of prayer. Now, friend, it's been, you know, I, I've heard this and I've begin to study it only just a little bit. Our prayers are not just empty words. Our prayers are, you know, if, if we're praying and we know we're talking to God, they're not just empty words. God hears those. And after God hears those, he don't just throw them away. He puts them in a bottle. And he, hold, he holds them together. And that got me to thinking, how big is my bottle? How big is, how big is, the, is the, uh, the bottle that he is, uh, you know, that he is using me with those vials? How big is my vial? That is holding my prayers. Oh my, 
I feel like tonight that, that my vial is not big enough and not full enough because I sometimes don't pray enough. And I know there's people that, uh, my grandma has got a bigger vial than I have, I promise you, because I've heard her pray, heard her call her children out to the Lord. And my daddy and my mama have got uh, bigger vials than I have full of prayer. And so it makes me want to pray more. It makes me want to talk to the Lord more because when he hears our prayers, it is a, as a sweet-smelling odor up to him. He, he likes that sacrifice of prayer. And so this verse right here should challenge us uh, to pray and to seek the face of God and to talk to him and to do what we're made to do to worship him. And as the first priority of prayer, our first priority in prayer should be to worship the Lord and offer those uh, sacrifices of praise to him and offer that sacrifice of worship to him when we call out to him. Many times, you know, uh, I'm, you know I've been bad in the past and I try not to ever do that anymore, but I've been bad in, in, in the past just to start asking the Lord for things when I bow my head. Lord, give me this. God wants our, our worship. God wants our praise. God wants us to be faithful in our prayer and to call upon him because those prayers are being bottled up. So I try to pray now and I try to ask the Lord, Lord, I thank you for who you are, for what you are. I thank you, God, for salvation and I worship him. And then I begin to say, Lord, I need to entreat thee for things that, that are important in my life. And God, you know what I need. And I begin to lay it out to the Lord. And God hears that. And, he, and when heard by God, your words, even though they may not make no sense to nobody else, and even though if somebody's listening to you pray, they don't understand all of that maybe or, or what your prayer may be. But God, even if we're grown in our prayers and we can't, we can't uh, communicate to God what's in our heart, and we're, you know, we're just grown in our, in our uh, speech to him, God understands that and that is raised as a sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord. Now, as... As uh, <clears throat> verse number nine, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. The untold thousands are singing a new song. What in the world is that song that they're, gonna, uh, that they're singing? What could it be? What could they be singing? I don't know, but it's a new song. So it's, it's nothing that you and I know anything about. It's a new song. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. That's my name. That's a, I like that song. And there, you know, there's uh, the song, Worthy is the Lamb. I like that song. That's a good song. But the new song sung in heaven by millions. Now, this ain't sung by angels. This is sung by, uh, by the saints of God. Uh, that are gathered around the throne of God. Now, have you got? Have, is everybody with me up to this point? Pretty much. Anybody confused? Anybody got a question? Okay, we'll continue on. Yes, sir. Uh, that, table. that strong angel. It's not. It's not said who that angel is. It's just proclaimed as being a strong angel. And there's not a. You know, there's. I. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, the, the only. Well, Michael and Gabriel are, are the two angels mentioned in Scripture, but it, it just says a strong angel. could be, uh, but it's just a strong angel, uh, meaning with, you know, in authority, probably, you know, probably uh, way up there in authority, he's just, just a strong angel. Anybody else? All right. As, as that new song is, be, is being sung, it's being sung because he is worthy. And so... Uh, out of every, because of the redeemed people of God, out of every kindred, every tongue, every nation, they're singing that song that he is worthy to open the seals. Why? He is worthy because he was slain. That, this is what makes him worthy to open these seals. The Lamb of God, the Lamb that you and I know, that we accepted in our heart as our Savior, believe in his blood sacrifice, that Lamb is worthy because he was a slain Lamb. And I, I don't know how far it goes with us being able to picture him when we get to heaven in our glorified bodies. We can never do it now. John couldn't do it then. He was there in his spirit. And uh, I don't know uh, how much of, of the cross we will see upon his body, but I'm sure there's marks of the cross still upon his body to remind us that he is a slain lamb 
And he's worthy because he's a slain lamb. He's worthy because he redeemed us to God. I was on my way to hell, lost without God. I needed redemption. I couldn't pay my way out of hell. I couldn't pay my way uh, into heaven. And the only way I could ever get there was if someone, a near kinsman, remember that, a near kinsman would redeem me. And the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, by his precious blood, he redeemed me. So he's a lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world and he's worthy because he redeemed us to God and uh, he redeemed us by his own blood and he's worthy because, because of his own blood he was, ever, he was so able to purchase whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord out of every tribe, every kindred, every nation. Now the question came up the other night about, uh, you know, about People being predestined to go to heaven or predestined to go to hell. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That perfectly answers that for me. The gospel is for, uh, preached and can be received by every tongue, every kindred, every nation. If that individual would trust the Lord as their Savior, then thank God I'm glad to know that they too can be part of the family of God. And friend, tonight, the body that's around the throne of God, that part that's around the throne of God worshiping is going to include me and you and you and you, and we're going to be there when we're, when we're there. And all of this is going to unfold before our eyes. And oh, what a blessing it is to be able to, to, to understand that this is things that are come to pass. The new song, that is the song of redemption that we just talked about a minute ago, what is the song? I don't know, but it will sure be a heavenly host to sing that, will it not? It will be the, the glorious people of God to sing that. Verse 11, verse 10. And has made us unto our gods kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now there's another uh, bit of truth that you and I know much about. Uh, as, as we observe the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, as we observe the one that redeemed us, he's also, as believers, listen, we're, everybody's somebody, amen? There's no little, body, no little bodies in the family of God. Everybody's somebody. And we're all going to rule and reign with Christ on earth when we come back to be with him. Now, I can't, it's hard for me to comprehend all that, I'll tell you, but I sure do believe it. He's been looking forward to how we will rule and reign with him. And there's going to be, uh, you know, countless things for, that God's going to have us to rule and reign over people. And, and I, you know, like I say, I don't know how all this is going to work out. But he has chosen us because we are in the body of Christ Oh, he has chosen us that we will rule and reign with him. So everybody in here is going to be a king and priest. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Oh, we, we all go, we're all going to be something very special, which we are already in the eyes of God, but we're all going to have special tasks and special things that God wants us to do, and you, you can work forever for him and never get tired. Won't that, won't that be wonderful? I can work eight hours, and, and uh, this week I've worked a lot of hours this week. And worked my, uh, my day off last week. And so it's been a, a long many hours, about 60 or something all together. And I get a little tired. But when we get to heaven, we work 24 hours a day because we won't need no rest. Oh, it's going to be wonderful there. Having no burdens to bear. What a day that's going to be when my Jesus I shall see. And when, we, when we're in heaven and all's going on down here on this earth, remember, the tribulation's going on down here on earth. We're in heaven worshiping him around the throne of God. But soon we're going to come back with him and worship and rule and reign with him upon the earth. Boy, that sound, man makes you want to get there, don't it? Makes you want to just get there and, and uh, go to be with the Lord. But listen, as I say to you tonight, I'm going to be there and you're going to be there. There's also millions and, and countless numbers of people that are in this world today that are not going to go to heaven because, uh, because they won't accept Jesus. What do we do? We pray for them. We invite them to come to church. We, we try our best to live before them that they can see God in us and, and whatever we do. But re listen, for those millions that are lost without God, it's going to be a totally different story for them. And what a sad story uh, that is. And verse number, uh, verse number 13, And every creature which was, which was in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne. 
Everybody's giving him worship. Everybody's giving him praise. And unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. Because of his redemption through the blood of Christ, we're going to be made kings and priests. And I say to you tonight, we're on the winning side and the best is yet to come. All because that Jesus loved me and loved you. Now, I, I can see that pretty clearly. I've got a good, a good a vivid imagination anyway sometimes. And I can, in my imaginative mind, I can see all of this unfolding. And I can about pick my place out around the throne of God. Amen. And I can about see you around there with me. Hey, preacher. Amen. We just shout it out. Amen. And guess what? That's going to go on as long as eternity rolls. We're going to have important things to do in the kingdom of God. Boy, what a blessing. Amen. What a blessing it is to know it. Now, I missed a little something up here. Let's, let me go back to that in case someone might have had a question. Uh, and I beheld, at verse 6, I, I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. These seven horns and seven eyes speak, the, the horns speak of the power of, his, of, his, uh, of, of the great power of God. And those, uh, those eyes speak of his omniscience, his all-knowing. And that's what these speak of. So God's a God that has all power and God's a God that knows everything. And soon he's coming back for me and you. And I'm looking forward to that day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. Lord, I pray, God, we've been clear, Lord, that people can understand, Lord, and get a picture in their mind of how beautiful heaven must be and, Lord, what it's going to be like to get around the throne of God. And, Lord, when we're at this place, at this place in Scripture, when, when the church is there, God, we know that eternity has just begun. And, Lord, greater things to happen. And Lord, and I pray, God, that you'd help us tonight. Lord, help us to live for you and serve you. Lord, help us to live every day like it's our last upon this earth and worship you. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyone else got